Coral Island's latest trailer for the 1.0 release was packed with tons of new information. Here's everything you might have missed. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone, and today I will be doing a full breakdown for Coral Island's most recent trailer. I will be covering both older and new information in this breakdown, so whether you're just discovering the game or a seasoned Coral Island fan, there is sure to be something new in this video for you. This is definitely the team's longest and most packed trailer to date, meaning we have a lot to cover, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. In the first shot, our player is entering from the beach beach and heading through the main entrance towards the heart of Coral Island, the town center called Starlet Town, where most of the shops and businesses are located. Now the player is going past Erica. This is a non-dateable townie character who is wearing her summer outfit. Also off to the left in the background, you can actually see her house. She lives there with Frank and their two cats, Peanut and Butter. And then off to the right, you can see the seating area out front of Raja's Coffee Corner. Now this second frame actually is really interesting to me because this is the entrance to the lake temple so you actually wade through the water to reach the lake temple it's in the middle of the lake you can see just by looking at this arch that this is pre-restoration so you can see it's looking a little bit gloomier there's not a lot of color to it and then also when you look at the flamingos they're actually gray and that's on purpose because the waters are not healthy enough for the flamingos to be eating properly there are these beautiful like floating votive type things like little candles lantern something of the sort here it looks so beautiful that's definitely a new touch from anything I've seen before so it looks like they're still adding more environmental assets all around the world in this third clip we can actually see the entrance to the deep forest now this is an area that you're not going to be unlocking right off the bat but it's so nice to see some of the wildlife around here there's also a bit of a setup over here which is remnants of what looks like it used to be a dig site if you look at the first three shots of this trailer you can see that the player character is wearing different overall outfits. These are going to be your starter overalls. You can pick between eight different colors, but you will have the opportunity to get tons more clothing as you make your way through the game, which we're going to see lots of actually in this trailer. Here we get to see the introduction to your farm. This is Mayor Connor who is orienting you to your new home. You can see the house in the background is looking quite abandoned and run down. And of course, as it zooms out, you can see just how expansive your farmland is. So this is the space that you get to work with when decorating, designing, farming, ranching, all that good stuff. So you will actually be able to have this bird's eye view look at your farm at any time from your farmland. Of course, we can see it is just covered in trees, grass, trash, rocks, all sorts of stuff that you'll need to clear out. You can see your farm house is located back here. You can see there are four bodies of water on your farm, which is really handy for refilling your watering can fishing and just looks so nice. There are also four different entrances to your farm. There's one right to the right of your house which brings you into Starlet Town. There's one on the left of your house which brings you back towards the ranch and the forest. There's one on the left side of your farm which brings you also to the forest but in a different direction. And then there's one down here that you can just barely see the south of your farm that brings you down towards the beach. In this frame we get a closer look at the abandoned house. It looks so nice honestly. I love the abandoned house house so much I almost just want to keep it. This is the shipping bin where you will sell your goods, whatever you have to sell at the end of the day, you'll sell here. There's also your mailbox where you will receive mail and gifts from the characters. There's also a very mysterious seller type structure right here. When you interact with it in the game, it says you need a key for it. So I'm very curious to see if we will get that key in 1.0 or not. Looks like our player has already upgraded their outfit. They have like a little denim jacket on and some jeans and a t-shirt. They're starting to get to work clearing their land. Then we transition to some rainy weather, which you guys, the rain in this game is probably one of the most stunning things I've ever seen in a video game. You can see all the details of the puddles around here too on your farm. The player has began to, you know, lay down some wooden pathing. This is one of my favorite paths because it actually curves when you place it. And then they're starting to plant some seeds here. So they're starting to get to work. Then we arrive in the winter. One thing that's really interesting about Coral Island is you actually can farm in the winter. You can grow crops. Something that's totally new and not in the current version of early access is actually this animation here. 
So this animation is indicating that your tool is not strong enough to break this stump, so you will have to upgrade it. Here we see the player in the fall season. Now the fall season on Coral Island is just so gorgeous, you guys. The player has purchased the coveted sus chicken outfit. They're growing some barley, sweet potatoes, fairy roses, rice, cranberries, and bok choy. There is a really nice variety of crops in this game, you guys. There's a ton to choose from, and you will unlock more and more as you clean up the town and raise your town rank. Also, you can see that the player is harvesting the crop by hand individually, but you can also harvest with the scythe. So remember that for when you're playing. It saves you some time for sure. So now we're continuing to see the evolution of the farm. So most of the decor it looks like is makeshift. This is the makeshift set. So it's crafted using, you know, like trash and scrap and stuff like that. So we have the fencing, the sign, the makeshift scarecrow, the different chests, the pathing, the arch as well back here, and even some gates. We also have a stone pathing down here, which is just such a versatile piece. It appears that this is in spring because the player is growing some potatoes, some strawberries, some radishes, and some turnips. There's also a well that the player has built, so you could refill your watering can here much more easily. There's some makers down here. So we have a compost machine, which is really awesome. This is gonna come in super handy for making fertilizer, which is important for upgrading the quality of your crops. And then we also have a furnace. So that's good for smelting ore into metal bars. There is nothing really different in this next clip. It's just advanced a little bit. So some of the crops are now growing in. One thing I think is worth pointing out though is you can actually see the strafe mechanic in motion here. So there is a feature for your player's movement where you can strafe to the side, which I don't use too much when I'm using keyboard and mouse, but for controller, it's really handy to line yourself up with the different crops. So you just slide to the side basically instead of having to constantly realign your player with each individual crop. It also looks like the player has upgraded their watering can to gold, which is pretty impressive for a farm that <laughs> still looks like this. And you definitely wouldn't be using your watering can like this if you had a gold one because it'll water more crops at once. But that's just an interesting little thing I caught there. So now on this farm, Farm, we're really getting an upgrade. On the left, we have a barn, which houses barn dwelling animals. We also have three cows, a brown cow and two standard cows. Now, as of right now, the animals are just given randomly in terms of their color variant. I did notice that the hay path got a complete glow up. It looks incredible. You can also see on the right here, the player has a coop with two chickens and a duck and chicklets, you guys. I'm hoping this suggests the return of the baby animals in 1.0. You might also notice the exterior of this chicken coop doesn't match the barn any longer. You can change the exterior of both of these buildings. Of course, we cannot ignore Nina's bench. Long story to why we call it Nina's bench. But speaking of Nina's bench, I currently have a spooky merch collection available at threadingpixels.com. There's tons of Coral Island themed stickers, as well as sweaters and t-shirts, even a glow in the dark design. So definitely if you like any thing from the collection and would like to support me as well as a small artist, be sure to get your orders in before October 31st, which is the last day that this collection will be available. And thank you so, so much for all the orders already. And I appreciate the support in advance. Back over at the farm, we have some corn planted, some tomatoes, some watermelons. We have orchids and blue dahlias, as well as some garlic. We also have some beautiful decorations. We have some statues, including this sus chicken statue. We also have some piranha plant statues use to kind of a nod to Mario here, as well as a cute little scarecrow over here. These are fruit trees, not fruit plants. These are mango trees. So there is a difference between fruit trees and fruit plants in the game. Fruit trees will stay year round. However, will only produce in certain seasons. And then fruit plants will actually wither off season. And something that is such a fun little touch is that this player actually appears to be wearing Jeff Smith's farmer overalls. We have another look at another farm here. The player has built a mill, which is used to process flour, sugar, salt, some beautiful flowers, roses and sunflowers. Some of the merfolk decoration pieces as well. We have some more fruit trees. There's some dragon fruit back here, oranges and durian. And then we have the Ocean Guardian DLC chest. We also have some pumpkins. I like the little touch of this jack-o'-lantern kind of blending in with them. It looks like we have a tier three sprinkler. So this is like the best one you can get. We also have 
have some hot peppers and this beautiful statue in the center. Some lilies down here. Over to the right, we have more roses and irises that are surrounding these bee houses. So the bee houses, you actually place flowers in them to produce honey. And then this is the ultimate scarecrow or the ultra scarecrow. This is something you'll have to develop actually at the laboratory. It covers a huge area and it also lets you change the appearance of the scarecrow to other designs, which is really cool. Lots of really nice decoration going on here. You can just spot the front of the insect house as well as the fish pond down here. So these are used to breed more insects and fish of a certain kind. I'm very happy to see this path has returned. Some of you might've missed it after the latest update. It seems like it's missing, but I'm really happy to see it because this is one of my favorite paths. Also something that's crazy that they just threw in here is this giant crop. You can actually grow giant crops and I've never seen them before, but now that I can see the size of it, I'm gonna try and grow one. Looks like it's three by three. It looks so cool, this giant star fruit. There's also the Ocean Explorer DLC Scarecrow down here, which is a nice little touch. You can actually see the player is using the strafing mechanic in this clip to place fences, as well as in the next clip to place automation chests. So this is something you're definitely going to be unlocking in later game. Another thing you have to develop at the laboratory, you can just place one single chest next to two machines and it will take whatever is in the chest, process it in the machine, and then put it back into the chest. So it does everything for you. But if you continue to place chest after chest after chest, you can create a long conveyor belt to process even more stuff and you can even turn it into a two-step process. So say for example, you also added aging barrels to this lineup. You could have the kegs processing your fruit into juice and then you could also have that juice being processed into wine, for example. There are also some some beautiful poppies back here on the left as well as lemon trees on the right. I just love how they do these farm layouts. I always just do squares but I love these triangular layouts. I think they look so nice. We have some cabbage, more poppies, soybeans, and bell peppers. There's also the Ocean Guardian DLC Scarecrow as well as a mermaid one but you can get this one in the game so anyone can get that one. This is also the Ocean Explorer DLC chest. We have lots of different pathings so we have some brick pathing, some from the gaming set as well as the scrap pathings. So you can actually make this out of trash which is turned into scrap. That's pretty cool. You can really upcycle a lot of the stuff in this game. Down on the left here we can see the architect's desk. So once you unlock this you can move things around from a bird's eye view. It does cost some money but it can be really useful especially for moving trees, crops, or bigger buildings like your farm buildings. Over on the right we have the dehydrator machines as well as some mason jars so you can process lots of different things with both of these makers. And then there's also over here the sturdy computer. This is a machine, again, that you'll develop at the lab that will give you access to online shopping and will give you forecasts for fish, bugs, ocean critters, and forageables, so it's very useful. And then two other things that are super interesting to me. The first are these, like, star fragment type things and then the outfit that the player is wearing looks like a berry or something like literally looks like a blueberry outfit or something like that it's so funny the next series of clips take place in the ocean so there is a huge focus on diving and healing the ocean clearing the trash up in this game you will go through a process of searching for solar orbs that are buried within the trash and once you retrieve them they will activate these structures which will then alter ultimately work to start healing the coral. You can see over here there's also a little treasure chest, so there's loot you can find around the ocean. And of course, Kibble will be your diving companion. Kibble is this cute little robot who makes sure you're safe, makes sure you don't pass out, makes sure you're not hungry. So Kibble's super helpful, also gives tips and tricks while you're down there, so we love Kibble here for sure. In this clip, you can see it looks like the player is in a deeper portion of the ocean, so you can go all the way from 10 to 15 meters deep. There's also these roots that you'll encounter. This one appears to be trapping the beluga characters, so they're different underwater NPCs. You'll have to free them along the way. This is an example of one of the characters that it looks like the player has free so this is Yogi Shark. Yogi Shark and the player are actually outside of an underwater cave. There's a cave for each depth, so 10, 20, 40, and 50 meters. This cave is found in the 40 meter depths. The next thing I'm going to say is going to be a spoiler, so skip ahead to the time I have marked after I'm done talking about this or close your ears if you don't want to know about this. 
So you can actually see, and it's in a few clips, so we'll talk about them all at once right now just to get it out of the way. The player actually has a tail. So this is a merfolk tail. And if you're curious as to, you know, are we just wearing a cute little outfit? Where's our oxygen tank? Well, we actually won't always need an oxygen tank because ultimately, you guys, you will actually be able to transform into a merfolk and you get to pick your tail, okay? I want to go to another obvious one first. It's the one where the player is riding on the back of the manta ray. So this is like the manta ray express. It'll help you travel from one area to another a bit more quickly. I love the little detail of the school of fish though here. I don't think I had that when I last played. This is another variant of the tail that you can have. It's so beautiful. I love how Kibble's with us too. The other clip where I believe we can actually be seen with the tail is a little bit sneaky. So initially I thought this was just the player catching sea critters underwater. But when you look at it, they're not wearing a mask they're not wearing their diving suit but they have two legs so i'm actually wondering if there is a tail variant that has like your legs separated i think that's so interesting so that was a little bit of a sneaky detail right there so we're done with the spoilers for now. Here we are witnessing a cutscene or event where we encounter Denali and Agung for potentially the first time it looks like because Denali's a little bit shocked. We're actually standing right outside of the cave that's found at the 10 meter depths, so the most shallow portion of the ocean. As a reminder, Denali is a romanceable candidate, however Agung is not. And then here we actually see the entrance to the Merfolk Kingdom and it looks like the player is trying to solve a puzzle potentially to unlock the gates. Here we can be spotted in the oracle chamber with Cho Oyu. There's so many beautiful details to be seen here and it does appear that this will be a shop because there is a shop mat right here. In this clip, you can see that the player is catching a sea critter. So you can actually use your bug net in the ocean to catch critters like shrimp, crabs, jellyfish, seahorses, all sorts of things that you can then donate to the museum or offer at the lake temple to the goddess of flowers. Of course, we do have the manta ray that the player is riding atop of to help us get around. You can actually spot a crab back here. That's actually not one of the crabs that you can collect. That's the same type of crab that's found on the beach. In the background though, you actually can see a bunch of those dark roots. So next we're moving on to take a look at some of the mining experience. So yes, you will be able to mine in Coral Island. This is the grand entrance to the Forgotten Caverns. There are four different gates or mine shafts found here, corresponding with the four elements. So the first one here is the earth gate. Then we have the water gate, the wind gate over to the left and the fire gate right here. Each of the gates will have different monsters, different crystals, or and other treasures. Interestingly, you may notice that there are three giants here that appear to be statues, but you'll have to follow the storyline to uncover what the significance of these structures exactly are. There's also a new outfit I've noticed here for the character. It looks like they actually are wearing a hat like on their back. It also reminds me of, like Indiana Jones or something. Next up, we can be spotted in the wind gate. This is what some levels of the wind gate look like. They're beautiful with all the leaves and such. There's a monster back here, one of the creatures that you'll have to fight or not fight if you keep your combat mode off. You don't have to fight in this game. You can see the gold ore that can be found here. So you can get bronze ore in the earth gate silver in the water gate, gold in the wind gate, and osmium in the fire gate. And the player looks like they're wearing a moth outfit, I think. In this clip, we are in the water gate. So it is frozen water though, of course. And just the little details of like the different colored rocks, like it's such a nice little touch. When the player hits this rock, you'll actually notice that the two rocks next to it also break. And that is because they have redeemed the rock domino perk on their mastery or skill tree. So when you have that perk redeemed, you'll have a chance with every hit for the action of hitting one rock to turn into a domino effect of breaking the rocks around it so that effect did activate here then we're in the fire gate you can see all the lava and you can see one of the monsters up here this is a tuku tuku it, it sort of acts like a mimic it's trying to mimic the osmium ore you can also see that the player has laid down a slime trap right here so if you lay that down and the monster goes through it they will get a little bit stuck and slow it down so if you do want to participate in combat there are other ways to engage with the enemy as well, not just, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat. The combat system definitely looks updated based on this clip. I mean, first of all, we have the ogre, or we like to call him Shrek, <laughs> but you can see his health bar on the top, his stagger bar below it, 
the damage that has been dealt from the player. There's also an enemy icon at the top, which may mean that he's been alerted to your presence because this one doesn't, doesn't have it. Or maybe that he's going to attack. You can also see like an area of effect around here that looks like maybe if you're in that zone, you're kind of in like the danger zone. I'm not sure because I haven't engaged with the new combat system as this is part of 1.0, not the current early access build, but it definitely looks more polished and like there's more to it than what we have right now. So that is good news. There's also a new backpack in this clip. It literally looks like a box. So <laughs> that's interesting as well. In this clip, we can see Chief Dan, who is one of the giants. The first giant that you will meet, it looks like he is running away. So that's definitely a glimpse at the beginning of the story with the giants. Here we get to take a look at the tool enchantment user interface. So something that is really cool about Coral Island is that you actually get to enchant your tools. So this is done at the giant's village. You will load up your tool you will offer some gems, artifacts, or fossils that you found to equal up to 100 points, and then you will redeem it for a random enchantment. So it could be something like a rare drop, which is what this player gets meaning every time you use your tool there's a chance you'll get a rare drop from it so like a geode a fossil node a coffer something like that but there's other ones that could affect something like your stamina there's a ton of different enchantments so you can equip up to three per tool but you have to free more giants in order to do so so right now this player just has one giant freed meaning they can only equip one enchantment you also do have to upgrade your tools to unlock additional slots so it's kind of like a two-step process you have to do but it's really cool we'll definitely talk about tool enchantments more in depth once the game is out, I'll put out a guide on it for you guys to make sure you understand the system and know which enchantments you want to look for and how to upgrade them and all that kind of stuff. As a little hint, if you're curious about the giants and the story and freeing them without any spoilers, I will just point out that there are five swirls here. So I'll leave it at that. In this clip, we can see the player is just roaming around foraging. They picked up some wasabi. It looks like they're going for an Elvis look with the pompadour hair, the shades, the leather jacket. So very fun. This is actually just to the left of the entrance to the caves. There's actually a secret location here. So this is a shop that you'll be able to visit once you unlock it. And don't worry, you won't miss it. You'll get a letter in the mail when it's available to you. This clip is really interesting to me. You might've noticed in my trailer reaction, which if you haven't seen, I'll definitely link that down below. It was super overwhelming for me to react to everything all at once, but I was really intrigued by this clip because I've never seen so many NPCs in one area and also paying attention to what I'm doing as the player. It looks like they're actually reacting to me fishing. So I'm not sure if the team set it up this way for the trailer specifically, or if this is something we might actually be able to look forward to in the game. Because at this point, no one reacts to you fishing or bug catching. No one cheers you on or celebrates when you make a successful catch. The only time they'll interact with you if you're doing an activity like this is if you're standing in the spot they want to be in and they'll say, let me pass please, or you're in my spot. Again, I'm not sure if this is going to be a new feature where if there's characters in the same area as you, they might actually attend to what you're doing. I don't know if that's wishful thinking. It's definitely not a cutscene because the mini game is activated here. So this is the fishing mini game where you have to balance the tension of your line to make a successful catch. I do love that the player is wearing a shark outfit. I feel like this is a nod to everyone who basically like broke the game with catching shark after shark after shark when they were not supposed to be that easy to catch. <laughs> the characters are in their summer outfits. We have Connor, we have Peanut, one of Frank and Erica's cats. We have Alice, Dinda, and Joko. And then in the background here, you can see Zoe and Oliver, two of the kids on the island. And then Zara's over here to the right. This trash can, you can actually rummage through if you want to. And I would highly recommend it. You can get some good finds from the trash. And this is the fish and sip over here. So the tavern where a lot of the characters hang out at during the evenings. I also noticed we've seen the seagulls before, but there is a pelican here. That's totally new to me. And then of course you can see those icky yucky roots coming out from the ocean as well as a bunch of oil. So there was an oil spill that has had these effects on the island, but the roots are very mysterious for sure. Then we get to take a look at the cooking mechanics. So in order to cook, you will need to upgrade your house to have a kitchen, and then you can collect a bunch of different utensils and recipes over time to cook all sorts of different foods that can be given as gifts or consumed for different buffs. So this player's cooking sashimi, and then you can see the recipe card. So it shows you what you need. You need the chef's knife along with wasabi and any fish to make sashimi. It also shows 
shows you how much health it'll replenish, how much stamina it will restore, and then the buff it will provide you. So this one is 10% boost your fishing proficiency. Now, interestingly, this yielded four dishes. Now, typically recipes yield two. So I don't know if they've changed that or if that's specific to sashimi, but that is interesting. Here we can see the player in the deep forest. So this is further past that entry point that we saw earlier, quite a bit further actually. And the player is either chopping down a new type of tree or a remodeled version of the pine tree because this does not look like the pine trees we usually have. Uh, we usually have pine, oak, and maple, and this one does not look like the pine trees. So I'm not sure if it's a new model or a new tree. The player also has a gold ax. So I'm wondering if these trees are going to be more difficult to chop down or if they're just going to be the same as all the other trees. The player is wearing a panda onesie, which is... <laughs> I've been waiting a whole year to see what it looked like and avoided spoilers. Who thought Stairway would be the one to spoil it for me before Halloween? There's also some ginseng back here. This is a more rare forageable that is very valuable, especially when processed. Uh, it's also very good for stamina replenishment. I just love how beautiful this area is. Just look at this statue back here and how the trees, roots wrap around these rocks. Like, it is just stunning. There's also a monkey statue over here. Then we get to take a look at King Tan, who is an NPC found in the deep forest. At this point, it seems like we don't understand what's being said. I do have a feeling that there'll be some story alongside this encounter, potentially connected to another temple that you can come across in the forest that looks like it may be set up for offerings. You can also see the, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil monkeys on the side here. Some fruit at the foot of King Tan. I'm wondering if eventually we will be able to understand what's being said. I'm wondering if we'll get some sort of communication device or, I don't know, maybe we'll learn how to <laughs> speak orangutan at the library. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm hoping eventually we'll be able to communicate somehow with the animals. It does kind of look like he's throwing a tantrum though, so it doesn't seem like he's too happy about whatever is going on. Here we can see a player bug catching. Now it looks like they've actually updated the catching system because this is a flying insect and you can actually now see a little target marker on the ground. So this cone here is the area of effect for your net, so anything in this area will be catchable. And having this target on the ground will make it much more manageable to line up this cone with the flying insect. So I really like that addition. I think it's really, really nice. You can also see the player is wearing the SpongeBob SquarePants <laughs> inspired fit. Here we get to take a look at the Starlet Town Hot Springs, which are clearly completely dried up. So this is something you will have to help to restore. We can also spot a panda in the background. This panda likes to play beautiful Zen flute music. And you can actually unlock access into this area, which we will see later actually in this trailer. This entire Hot Springs is just behind the observatory and there is a bathhouse over to the left as well, which is where you enter through. This NPC is named Takeba. Takeba's a bit of a mystery because in the beginning, he was giftable and friendable. He was on the relationship UI as someone you could befriend, but he no longer is and you can't give him gifts anymore, but you can talk to him. So I think they just might've changed their mind maybe with how in depth Takeba's story is gonna go. I'm not certain. There are cutscenes revolving around him though, so it's a bit of a mystery right now. You can also spot some wasabi and a bamboo shoot back there. So bamboo shoots are available year round but only really in this area. Sometimes they spawn just outside of it, but mostly just in here. So you'll have to unlock that area first to get to them. Then we get to the classic pufferfish scene. Obviously the characters are protesting that pufferfish is moving into the island. This seems to be like the main storyline that hasn't really gone too far in early access. I'm guessing they did that on purpose so that it could be capped as a surprise for the 1.0 version of the game. But yes, this is pufferfish. This is Karen, one of the villains in the story. There's also a mini mini golf course over here. So this eventually will be a mini game. We also get a look at a cutscene, which is in the form of a flashback where the town is reacting to the very poor F rank for the town. So this is where you start out. You start at an F and you got to make your way all the way up to an A, at least for the 1.0 version. Later on, you'll also be able to get higher to like an S rank. But yeah, you start at an F. Here's the judge who's deciding that <laughs> we're at an F rank. And interestingly, Karen is actually here for the scene. So I wonder why. Here we get to to take a look at the starter museum which already looks beautiful but you will be able to expand this to become quite big. Now, clearly it's completely empty. You will have to donate everything yourself and you can see the donation box right here. That's where you'll go to contribute. This is Scott who works at the museum and has a pretty big passion for artifacts. 
and he is a dateable character, if you were wondering. Here we get to take a look at one of the opening cutscenes for the Beach Cleanup Festival, which is one of the summer festivals. You can spot a ton of characters in their summer outfits. We have Valentina, Archie, and Butter, the other cat, Peanut and Butter, Frank and Erica's cats. Erica's down here with Alice and Noah. So some of the characters will actually have bathing suit outfits. It's mostly the dateable characters that do. There are some townies that do as well, specifically the townies who spend a lot of time every day on the beach. Here we have Antonio, who is Valentina's dad. I do have a video that covers what we know so far about the family trees on Coral Island. If you want to watch that before playing the game, it could be really helpful. There's Emily here and Sam. Frank is here as well. Theo's down here. Jim and you can just barely see Mark in his speedo on the right down here. So at this festival, there are a couple different mini games, but we can see the registration for tug of war here, as well as the area you go to start the main event, this little turtle balloon thing. There's also a shop that looks like it's been added. So that's good news because before the only shop available was Pufferfish's shop. So now we have another business to support instead of Pufferfish, which is really good news. Here we have a cutscene of these roots retreating deeper into the ocean and and then we also get to take a look at the tree planting festival, so how it starts, super barren, and then as we zoom out, you can see it coming back to life. This is actually a festival that will be completed over four years in game, which is very cool. So every year you're working more and more to restore this island. We can see a ton of characters here. I'm not gonna go through them all, but a lot of the characters come to help out, which is really nice. What I will point out is that it appears they've added a shop to this festival as well, which wasn't there previously. So that is another really exciting thing that I can't wait to check out. And you can also see again, this is where you'll start the main event. Whenever you see one of these little balloon things at a festival, that's where you start the main event so you usually want to do it last but it will leave you back off at the festival once you're finished it so you can continue to explore if you miss something then we get a beautiful overhead shot of the lake temple this is how it'll start off looking when you first come to coral island again the flamingos are gray everything is gray the water looks a little murky in the temple itself there is a lotus flower here though interestingly you can see the player is wearing what appears to be a traditional balinese sort of outfit it looks very beautiful beautiful and comfy, I must say. But you can see they're working to make these contributions. So here there are four different altars of offerings and at each altar there are six different bundles that you have to complete. For each bundle you'll get a reward and then for each completed altar you'll get a pretty big reward. When you get one of your rewards it's presented to you here. However, this item in particular is actually something special that you'll get pretty early on that'll definitely help you move around Coral Island. You can see how the temple becomes restored over time as you complete more offerings. The flamingos are finally turning pink. The waters are clearing up. This is just so beautiful. It actually, every time I look at it, it literally brings tears to my eyes. I had to just pause now and like breathe a little bit before talking to you guys because it makes me so emotional to see this for some reason, which I believe really speaks to the impact of the story that I've experienced so far in the game, as well as just the effectiveness of the art design. It really packs an emotional punch. So the flamingos are flying through the skies. They are all pink. They are hanging out with the player. It's so cute. Everything just looks so alive and beautiful. Here we have a look at the town rank UI. So this is how your town is graded essentially. You improve this by making contributions to the museum, cleaning up the ocean, and making offerings at the temple. That's the short of it. There are more complexities. I do want to point out though that you are absolutely not going to achieve a town rank C year one spring day five it's not gonna happen <laughs> you can definitely get c rank in the first year and it's a good idea to try to do so before winter so you have access to winter seeds at sam's general store but it's not gonna happen on day five of year one that's completely impossible so <laughs> here this is a slice of life event so those are the events that just happen to happen as you roam around the island you might enter a certain area at a certain time or in a certain season and just happen to get to see an event that usually involves many of the different characters on Coral Island and just helps you get to know the vibe of the island, how the characters connect with each other, the activities they participate in, the events in the community outside of the festivals, just lots of things like that. So it makes the world feels so alive and more connected. And in this one, you can actually see some of the winter outfits for the characters. If you want to get kind of an idea of what some of them will look like, Frank, Surya, Luke, Noah, 
the player, Sam on stage, Jack, Leah, Jim, Emily, Yuri, and Macy. And this is at the tavern. Here we can take a look at the Cherry Blossom Festival, which is the other festival in the springtime. So we have this one and the tree planting festival. And this is one of the mini games at the Cherry Blossom Festival, the Balap Karung race or the potato sack race. So we can see our player wearing a money hat and competing against Eva, Scott, and Lily, all romanceable characters. And there's a ton of the characters here, even Taco's cheering us on. So this is a really nice mini game and a really nice little setup. Then we get to take a look at some of the cutscenes and hard events. We have one with Aaliyah playing volleyball on the beach. Then we have an event with Yuri at the hot springs. And as you can see, there's actually water here. So it looks like the hot springs are being restored. Next up, we have an event with Theo in the community center. It looks like he is teaching us how to play guitar. Now, one other thing you may or may not notice are actually the hearts here next to the characters' names. These are going to evolve from empty heart to half heart to full heart. And they're also going to change in color as you level up with the character. So here, for example, we have half a heart with Theo in this color and then when we get to mark you can actually see we have half of a silver heart with mark so we're at a different stage in the relationship with him and this doesn't seem to be a cutscene. this just seems to be us chatting with mark because we're actually at a festival this is the spooky festival and you can see that this appears to be where we might activate the main event of it which is the ogo ogo parade interestingly we can see chieftain here who makes an appearance and our player is also wearing an octopus outfit <laughs> which is very funny here we have another heart event this time it's with macy we're skipping rocks and you can see we have half of a gold heart with her you can also see the player is wearing a headscarf so if you were wondering there is at least one headscarf option this is a cut scene in the merfolk kingdom we are right outside of the naga palace this is Samaru, who is a dateable character and this is deno who is not dateable and doesn't appear to be befriendable either they are not currently on the relationship ui for the merfolk so it seems that they're just a side character but they do have a minor role in the story so far. It looks like they're not happy with us, so definitely don't expect to just waltz into the merfolk kingdom and have everything be all peachy. Here we can actually see part of the inside of the Naga Palace. This is Princess Mirinjani's room and Princess Mirinjani herself. She is a dateable character, fortunately. And I think it's really interesting to see the details of how the merfolk live. Like it looks like this is her bed and she has lots of little objects from the human world. She definitely gives some Ariel vibes for sure. I also would like to point out this because Stairway included it in the trailer. I actually cannot believe that they have a shot with this in it. That is like a huge story spoiler. So if you don't know, you'll find out. And if you do, can you believe they included this in the trailer? Now, next we actually get to see a date event with Kenny. Now you can see we have half a blue heart with Kenny, so we're getting up there. And this is the first time I've ever seen anything related to a date, which makes me so excited to think about the options that could be available for the different dates. That's another conversation for another day. There's so much to speculate on with it, but this looks lovely in the fall setting. Looks like we're having a little painting date. And then this one, oh my gosh, there's so many spoilers in this trailer. Like this is such a huge spoiler for Surya's like romantic event. This one we have a full blue heart and this is just incredible. Like it looks so beautiful, so romantic. The rose petals, the candles, the twinkle lights, the music, the little wine set at the table. Like it just looks beautiful. The fact that they're even like twirling the player around is just so sweet. So this is crazy. I don't want any more spoilers for heart events. If this was a Nina event, I think I would have been heartbroken to see it this way. So I'm sorry for all of you Surya lovers who had this spoiled for you. But at the same time, I think it also made a lot of us maybe like Surya even more. And also winter fit. This is a winter fit. We haven't seen that before. Then we get to see a little bit of character customization. So this is done at the salon. So if you change your mind about your character later, you can change up basically anything about your look. You can change your hairstyle, your hair color. They briefly show a flower beard as well. So you can change up your facial hair. You can change up your facial structure, your body type, your skin tone. Like you can change it all. We're also taking a look here at the user interface for the clothing store. I don't know if I'm making this up, but this looks like it's a nod to blathers from animal crossing if i'm not mistaken i think it is so i think that is so cute I, when i watched the trailer back again i squealed because i was like wait that's blathers i think uh, there's also you can see a ton of the different overall options you'll be able to access some new ones to me include this blue sus chicken overall look there's also this teddy bear onesie a llama onesie i think this is that balinese 
style outfit that the character was wearing at the lake temple there's also like a business suit of some sort there's some other things down here that look new i wish i could get a better look i think this is the cherry blossom overalls this almost looks like it could be a dress these could be the wedding fits actually you guys these could be a very top of the wedding fit icons potentially i'm not sure it's hard to say and then we also get to take a look at the harvest moon hat and the harvest basket there then we get to take a look at the new decor mode user interface so this is new from early access it has been revamped you can go into this build mode and then look at all your furniture in different categories you can move your camera around you can sort the furniture different ways you can actually search up exactly what you need if you know what it's called you can zoom in and out pick up in place undo things so this is a lot more intricate than it is in early access right now i just hope that one day we'll be able to place things on angles and also a little bit off grid now i do notice that the grid system on this item is slightly different than what i'm familiar with you can see these like half Half grid spaces but it still looks like it's being locked to the grid on the actual floor so i think it's still going to be somewhat restricted with how you line things up but i'm hopeful that they'll continue to improve this in the future so we can be more precise with our furniture placement and fingers crossed one day we'll be able to sit on all this beautiful furniture but only time will tell it's interesting to note that you can place different floorings on different sections of your house same goes for walls so you can have Quite a bit of precision with how you customize that aspect of your design we also get to take a look at some of the different styles so this is the kosan or kos kosan style this is the javanese style then we have the bauhaus style this is the baroque style this is the gaming room style and then of course we have the merfolk set we also get to take a look at the exterior customizations for our house so we have the standard one the sort of cottage type exterior the more modern look a sort of zen type style i love like the sand and rocks and trees out front here on the patio there's also the beach style uh, there's lots of different character outfits that are shown most notably we actually get to see that llama onesie in action then we get our first look or my first look at bobby which is why i screeched in my reaction because i've never seen this character before since then i have met bobby and he is definitely not a ray of sunshine he is definitely another villain character but this encounter takes place at the harvest festival in the fall season jeff smith is over here too so we got our first look at bobby and jeff smith two new npcs so this is the competition where you basically are trying to create the best harvest display and beat bobby from beluga bay all the characters are in their fall outfits there's mooncakes there's lanterns it's just a delightful festival other than this character <laughs> i love how the villains make the story so much more dynamic here we get to take a look at the pet festival or the animal festival which is one of the summer festivals we're chatting with noah in his summer outfit this is another dateable character we are in a dinosaur outfit and i really like that noah's dialogue is actually responsive to that so he's literally saying oh wow a dinosaur outfit that's uh you don't see that every day so i like that there's a ton of details here there's a ton of characters lots of interactions with the animals most notably you can also see the very edge of the chicken stair contest registration table so that's one of the mini games this appears to be some sort of cutscene. it could be a slice of life or it could be a suki event i personally have not unlocked this one yet but it looks like they're telling some spooky stories at the coral inn so i can't wait to get this one and yes suki is a dateable character actually everyone here is dateable and then this is our first look at the winter fair festival so this is one of the two festivals in the winter season we get to see leah's winter outfit for the first time it looks incredible it is so leah and i love it so much uh, the player for some reason is not wearing any clothes and leah actually notices that she says why are you naked aren't you cold i'm honestly with leah on this one why are you naked you must be cold look how sparkly the snow looks this is definitely new the beach does not usually sparkle like this in the winter so that is lovely we can see a ton of the characters and again get a glimpse at their outfits for winter we have ben over here who actually has his own little shop at the winter fair festival which is really cool even his van is lit up with some some lights ben is a dateable character dippa a townie is over here as well then waku and kenny dateable characters frank a townie noah dateable sam townie i believe this is raj dateable millie also dateable and nina we get to get a very small glimpse at nina's winter outfit and this appears to be a wabanana little pop-up shop so that is really cute i hope we can get some like really exclusive fashions here i hope there's lots of unique special items at this festival to get also luke and taco down here luke is another dateable character there's some sort of metal 
little structure down here with lights. Don't know what that is, but I sure hope it has nothing to do with pufferfish. You guys, I think this is our first look at the savannah biome because this is nowhere on Coral Island right now. This is not something you can access. It's giving Lion King, okay? But our character is wearing some sort of cute little backpack and just looking out over the horizon, it looks like there's like some raccoons back here, which would explain. I'm just making the connection now. At the pet festival, Zara has like a pet raccoon or a raccoon with her and that's the first I've ever seen it or heard of it and that's all I've ever heard of it with Zara. And Zara does have family that lives on the upper portion of Coral Island in the savannah area and she often goes to visit them so her boat will be missing. This is like the lore and so it would actually make sense if these raccoons were from this part of the island and that's why she has one. There's also looks like some beavers down here and monkey climbing up the tree, some monkeys over here. So the savannah biome is not going to be in the 1.0 release but it will be coming as an update later down the line in 2024 sometime so I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be so cool to explore and i can't believe we're actually getting a first look at it this is crazy here we get to take a look at the inside of the animal shelter which is found in the community center center of town this actually looks like it could be a cutscene because suki and eva are both here playing with the animals we can also spot butter peanut peanut <laughs> taco and bonbon so these animals aren't usually here because they're usually roaming around the island there's also this toy here i've never seen before this little cow toy it looks so cute so i feel like this could be a cutscene. but mark is standing here at the counter this is where you'll go to adopt a pet eventually there's so many to choose from you can get a look at some of them here they have portraits they have icons you can see that they require a pet house or pet bed to adopt them they do have names but you can rename them so you're not going to be stuck with these names if you don't like them here we can take a look at the pet house actually and i love how this one matches this specific exterior customization for your home i wonder if the fact that they're showing it like this means that eventually we'll be able to customize this as well to match the different exterior variants of our home i think that would be really cool either way this looks beautiful I love the little like plant box on the roof it looks stunning and this is one of the cats you can adopt here is actually that area behind the hot springs that I was talking about earlier and I said we'd see it again so this area isn't unlocked in the beginning of the game you'll have to unlock it later on but here we're in the winter and we are proposing to waku so not only do we get to take a look at his winter outfit but we get to take a look at what he says when you propose it looks like we will propose with a classic diamond ring and then the character will say yes i don't know would they say no is there a scenario where they'd say no i'm not sure we i guess we'll have to wait and find out now I'm going to give a heads up here because I know some of you were closing your eyes and clicking away from the trailer at the next part because it is a huge, huge spoiler for Lily's wedding. I'm actually, to be honest, a little bit sad that they included this in the trailer. I understand they want to promote marriage and the weddings, but to pick Lily, who's like one of the top characters that people want to romance, is a huge spoiler because you get to see her wedding outfit and how it's all going to go down. So if you don't want to see Lily's wedding, please skip to the next timestamp in this video please save it for when you actually get to play i feel so sad for everyone who's been spoiled and it's not going to be quite the same it still will be amazing though you guys i promise the wedding will still be amazing but it is a big spoiler so click to the next timestamp if you don't want to see lily's wedding so we do get to see lily's wedding dress it is absolutely gorgeous and stunning i am so glad this isn't nina i would have cried not tears of happiness tears of sadness if this were nina i would have been devastated to be completely honest so the one thing we can take away from this, actually a few things we can take away from this. The first is that Mayor Connor appears to be the one who will be wedding us. The second is that we're going to be going to Raphael's wedding too next, but we don't see Raphael's portrait. Based on the two weddings, it looks like there'll be different locations. Now, I don't know if the different characters will have different locations or if you will pick between like maybe two, three, four locations yourself and choose where you want to be married. I'm not sure. This location is in the area by the lake where a lot of the festivals are held. And then you can see in the next segment, this wedding is taking place on the beach actually. So it looks like there could be different locations for the wedding. Weddings. Again, I don't know if that's going to be NPC dependent or you pick between like a couple preset locations where you want to have the wedding. And then you can also see that it does appear the characters will have their own unique wedding outfits. There's no chance that every NPC is either wearing this outfit or this dress. Like there's no way. So there's going to be fireworks. Everyone in the town looks like is going to be there. I'm really curious to know if any other family members will show up depending on who you're marrying or if it's just going to be the town and the family that already exists on the island. It's definitely going to be a very heartwarming 
heartwarming event. It looks so lovely and beautiful and I'm gonna just go past it because I don't want to dwell on it too much. So now we'll go to the next scene where the player has had a baby with Leah and this is the little baby's portrait. So it looks like you'll be able to name your baby and it looks like there's gonna be lots of cute furniture and stuff for the baby's room. I'm hoping that if you choose that you don't want to have a baby that you don't have to have a crib in your house. I'm hoping it's not just gonna come with the crib and then you have to figure out what to do with it. I'm hoping there'll be something we can buy as like an optional thing because I don't exactly want to have kids at least in every playthrough. I definitely want some playthroughs where I'm child free because I want to be child free. So we'll see how that goes. But I think the portrait is really cute. I love the sus chicken blanket. It's so cute. And if any of you were confused about the difference between children available at 1.0 versus later in 2024, like what we saw on the roadmap, you'll have this portrait for the child. But when your child actually grows up, there'll be different portraits for that version of the child. So I don't know how that's going to work, if it's going to vary depending on the character that you actually have a baby with. I feel like it should to some extent, but I don't know how they're going to do that with all the different variations of characters. You know, depending on how your character looks, like I have no idea how they're going to orchestrate that. So leave that up to them. I'm glad they're the ones figuring it out and not me. But yeah, there will, your kids will grow up. And if you didn't know, the, the children on the island will actually also grow up to teenagers too. So that's pretty cool. You can also see the pet here. This is curled up on the little pet bed. I think that's so sweet. And this is on the second floor of the house. So you can upgrade your house again uh, to have an upper floor. And and I don't know if this is an event or something, but it looks like some sort of event. The player is dancing around. And then we end the trailer with the beautiful, delightful, glorious goddess of flowers swooping from the lake temple. There's a lot of story to be had there as well, which of course I'll leave you to discover. But that is the trailer. We pan out. We have the, the release date. We have the platforms it's available on, all that good stuff. If you have any questions specifically about the news surrounding the game's release, definitely check out my last video, which covered all that. Always check the description for useful links. So that was almost every single thing in the latest trailer for Coral Island. Please let me know down in the comments which of the details you missed. If you learned something new from this video, please feel free to share it down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. I love the conversations that take place in the comment sections. So please be sure to share your thoughts. Please also be sure to like the video. It really helps out. And this was a big, long video. So I would super appreciate the like on this one if you would be so kind to take the time and do so. As always, please make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on, especially as we ramp up for Coral Islands 1.0 release. You do not want to miss out on anything, you guys. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Meredith for Modus, Tansy, Cisco, Cheese, Divine Raven, Blossom, Paul, Jack, Danny, Becca, Kayla, Isonal, Wolf, Salem, Zeres, Anime Lover, Ember, Lawrence, Faviola, Sunshine, and Kicknell, my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible. It means the world to me.